the presence of the doctor is the beginning of the cure and a truly amazing doctor is very hard to find and impossible to forget welcome back to my channel this is Archana speaking so today I am going to speak about uh, a person who played a major role in bringing me back to life in July 2020 when I was diagnosed with my senior gravis and after that falling into my senior crisis stage it was difficult for me to think how my life would have been ahead until when I met Dr. Matthew Abraham uh, an expert veteran neurologist who, ex who, is, who has expertised in neurological diseases he gave me confidence that's the most important thing which I would say you know played a major role in bringing me back to life the only thing which he had told me when I, when I met him for the first time he's like have patience this takes time but have patience trust me the moment I met him and the 45 minutes of discussion I had with him in the on the first day when I came out of that room I felt a different kind of energy I requested him to talk about my senior gravis through my channel considering June being the awareness month he immediately agreed he is the most approachable doctor I have ever come across in my life let's move on to dr. Matthew Abraham and let's hear from him what he has to tell about my senior gravis here you go yeah um, dr. Matthew Abraham a senior consultant neurologist at uh, Astem at City Cochin yeah this question about what is myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis is essentially a neuromuscular disorder where the transmission of a message from nerve to the muscle is impaired as a result of which the muscle does not function properly and so the patient has got a sense of weakness now this affects certain special groups of muscles initially before it may spread to the other disease to the other areas of the body so the commonest uh, group of uh, muscles which are affected are those of the eye movements as a result of which you develop a squint and a double vision but you can also have an inf affection of the throat muscles the tongue muscles as a result of which chewing is affected and swallowing is affected and these will uh, affect the quality of life greatly the peculiar aspect about myasthenia gravis is that it is a fluctuating disease so very often the patient feels better early in the morning but as the muscles are being used he develops he or she develops fatigue more in the evenings and this is the clue as far as the doctor is concerned it is essentially a pure motor disease as a result of which no sensory symptoms occur over a period of time it may affect the rest of the muscles and can of sometimes become life-threatening if the muscles of respiration are affected uh, the pathology that is involved is the as I mentioned before is the transmission of the uh, message from the nerve to the muscle this happens because of the release of a particular neurotransmitter which is a chemical messenger which is re released by the nerve ending into the gap between the nerve and the muscle which is known as a synapse now this chemical is acetylcholine and it swims across this gap and attaches itself to a receptor on the muscle side of the gap and when this attachment takes place it changes the polarity of the or the electrical uh, qualities of the membrane at the muscle end and that muscle becomes leaky it allows sodium to rush in and that is what triggers off the impulse in the muscle this is how a normal impulse is transmitted from the nerve to the muscle in myasthenia gravis the concentration of the acetylcholine receptors on the muscle side of the synapse becomes depleted and this is because of an autoimmune phenomenon and this is why we call this an autoimmune disease by an autoimmune disease we mean that the muscle the body's defenses accidentally or mistakenly attack its own tissues and here the target of the attack is the acetylcholine receptor 
the result of which is that the acetylcholine dis becomes destroyed becomes depleted and so the number of acetylcholine receptors which are available for the interaction to take place between neurotransmitter and the uh, receptor becomes less so the chance of this message being successfully transmitted from nerve to muscle becomes less the result is that the impulse cannot be conveyed adequately to the muscle the muscular contraction suffers as a result and therefore becomes weak this is essentially what happens in myasthenia gravis why it affects only selective muscles we still don't know why it affects one side more than the other we still don't know but we are beginning to understand more and more of this disease and now treatment modalities are available this is in the form of two specific uh, pathways one is to improve the availability of acetylcholine in the in the synapse so that the chance of this going and hitting a depleted post membrane acetylcholine receptor is higher that is what we do with drugs like neostigmine and pyridostigmine what these drugs do is essentially to reduce the breakdown of acetylcholine in the synapse as a result of which the concentration of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine increases and therefore the chance of this going and hitting a depleted acetylcholine receptor on the other side is higher so this improves the the symptom of weakness for this particular patient that is why we adjust the doses depending upon the individual patient and requirement on the other hand we now have treatment modalities which are directed towards the basic cause of the disease and that is where we use drugs like steroids we use drugs like azathioprine we use drugs like rituximab and also in an acute phase we can use interventions like ivig or plasmapheresis plasmapheresis is, is essentially a uh, procedure like uh, dialysis in which blood is taken out of the system it is split it is uh, separated into the cells and proteins and it is really in the abnormal proteins which are available in the plasma that are the responsible for the disease so the plasma is thrown out and the rbcs red blood cells are reinfused so the concentration of abnormal uh, protein in the plasma is reduced as a result of which the intensity of the disease is reduced this is an intervention which is used in an acute situation or before uh, a, a procedure called thymectomy which is one of the methods of treatment in this disease because uh, sometimes or often myasthenia gravis is associated with an abnormal uh, growth in the thymus gland uh, and uh, removal of the thymus gland especially when it is uh, enlarged or when it is malignant uh, helps in the treatment of the disease ivig uh, is a special type of uh, immunoglobulin which is a good globulin which is given intravenously into the system in an acute emergency it acts by probably improving the proportion of good proteins to bad proteins as a result of which the deleterious effects of myasthenia gravis uh, are uh, temporarily taken care of these are done in, in uh, interventions which are done as emergencies or preoperatively or when there is a problem post operatively after a thymectomy but drugs like mycophenolate azathioprine steroids for a short time and now rituximab are drugs which are used which help tackle the basic pathophysiology of the disease which is the autoimmune abnormality that is suppressed the over a period of time it works by reducing the severity of the disease process itself till it becomes quiescent and the requirement for the other drug like neostigmine becomes slowly reduced this is how treatment modalities are now available for myasthenia gravis um, the why rituximab because rituximab is an anti b cell uh, drug and it is uh, in in the system in the immune system there are two types of lymphocytes what are known as t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes it is the b lymphocytes which produce the antibodies 
and here the abnormal antibodies are what are responsible for myasthenia gravis and that is why rituximab being an anti B lymphocyte, an anti -B lymphocyte uh, drug by depleting those we reduce the amount of abnormal uh, antibodies or proteins that are produced which are supposed to be responsible for the drug. The important thing to remember is that all these immunosuppressants have got their own side effects and problems because they while they reduce the abnormal immunity they also suppress normal natural immunity and therefore patients at that time become susceptible or more susceptible to infections and other problems. Uh, steroids can also induce diabetes for example. So those things have to be monitored very carefully and uh, because you can also have uh, aggravations of myasthenia attacks with infections. So these would be the broad uh, principles of uh, what we need to or a layman needs to know and what patients need to know about the disease. Thank Since you. Since brought him back to life, <laughs> yeah, I cannot thank him enough. Uh, you know, nice of you. <laughs> yeah, so last one year uh, under his treatment, I am here like this, you know, being a messenger patient, Archana here. Uh, she is well, that's the important <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to him, you, they, they say you see God in many people, right? And I say that in him, you know, and I mean it, I really mean it. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you have spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one ton of pitch and toast and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on.